Hello, my name is Patrick Cannon. I'm General Counsel with XL Pro Staffing and Consulting. I'm going to be talking with you today about the new Form I-9 uh, that was just published on August 1st of 2023. This is a form uh, that was supposed to be published towards the end of last year, but was pushed back and we now finally have, and it will replace the current version of, I of Form I-9 that will expire on October 31st, uh, 2023. So starting November 1st, this will be the Form I-9 that everyone will have to use moving forward. So first, what is Form I-9? I-9 is a form used to verify the employment status of your employees. For the purposes of this video, uh, we're just talking about Form I-9. We're not getting into e-verify or any other electronic means to verify your employment status of your employees. This is based on an in-person review of documents provided by an employee who you are looking to hire. Basically, uh, this, this video will be just a, a summary of what I-9 is and a brief walkthrough of how to fill it out. The good news is if you're familiar with Form I-9, the content of this really hasn't changed that much. Uh, one section was expanded uh, and there's also one additional section that's been added. But for the most part, uh, it's still seeking the same information. So if you have any familiarity with Form I-9, this won't be anything all that new. Uh, if you are new to Form I-9, this will be a brief summary of what you need to do to fill it out. Uh, we're going to jump right in and talk about uh, how to start in Section 1. Section 1 of Form I-9 is filled out by the employee, and you'll see here basic information of last name, first name, middle initial, other last name if, if there are any uh, maiden names or aliases. A second line here is the address information, address, street, town, state, and zip code. No surprises there. And then third line, identifying information for the individual employee, such as date of birth, social security number, and contact information, email address, and telephone number. Below that initial information, the employee has four options uh, to identify their eligibility to work uh, in the United States. First option is if they're a citizen of the U.S. Second option is a non-citizen national of the U.S. Third option, a lawful permanent resident. And fourth option is a non-citizen. Now, if the employee selects option four, and they will have to provide some additional information here uh, at the bottom, such as listing their USCISA number, or uh, Form I-94 admission number, or uh, listing a foreign passport in the country of origin. And then once uh, once that information has been provided, the employee signs and dates. Now, a couple things to keep in mind on Section 1. But most importantly, this is a section that is completed by the employee. Uh, it's not completed by the employer. The employee does have to attest to the accuracy of the information provided. And one important rule for the employer is that there is no verification of the information uh, submitted by the employee in this section. This uh, information does need to be completed no later than the first day of employment, and, but not before uh, accepting a job offer. Also, one thing to remember when the employer is complete in Section 2 is that there is a three-day deadline for the employer to complete the section. So, important to remember, while well, the employee uh, fills out Section 1 on their first day, uh, the employer then has three days to complete Section 2. Uh, there is uh, an exception to this. Uh, if the employee's uh, employment will conclude within that three-day time period, then the employer does need to complete Section 1 on day one as well. Again, straightforward information listed uh, that was in the old version of Form I-9. Moving on to Section 2, uh, this is the Employer Review and Verification section. This is where the employer reviews additional information provided by the employee to verify their eligibility to work in the U.S. There are several options we're going to get to here in a second for information the employee can provide. Another important rule for the um, employer to follow here is the employer cannot dictate what information the employee provides. It is up to the employee and is uh, compiled again from a list we're going to talk about here in a second, but the employer again cannot say, I have to see this information in order for us to complete this form. There are three columns here you'll see on new form I-9 and same as is the original form, list A, list B, and list C. List A documents are documents that identify both or that establish both the employee's identity uh, and eligibility to work. List B uh, are for documents that identify the employee only and list C establishes the eligibility to work. So you can either do it all in one document on list A or uh, have a combination of a list B and list C document 
to get the same information. For all of these documents, you need to list the document title, the issuing authority, the document number, and the expiration date. This is the same across the board for if it's a list A, B, or C document. If an employee produces a qualifying list A document, that's where the employer's review ends. There is no need to move on to list B or C. You will also notice here on uh, list A documents, there's the option to list additional documents. Again, when we get to the next page, you'll see some list A documents actually require more than one document to form a complete list A document. So there's some additional sections here for you to list additional documents as needed. Once the review of the employee documents has been completed, the employer identifies last name, signs, and dates and also list the business information, name of the business, and business address. There is one section here, additional information. This is if any more information is required to identify the documents provided by the employee. Commonly, this is a section where if the document provided by the employee has expired, you can list information updating that uh, document here. You'll also see here uh, this check here if you have used an alternate procedure uh, authorized by Department of Homeland Security to examine documents. It's, it gets into e-verify if you're reviewing documents remotely. Again, for the purposes of this video, um, we're talking about reviewing documents in person. If you do have questions about filling out Form I-9, there, there is a link that we'll get to again here in a second that shows additional instructions you can uh, review if you have questions. So moving on from page one, uh, moving on to now pages two and three. Page two here lists uh, all the acceptable documents under list A, B, and C. The most common example, uh, U.S. passport and passport card. If you have one of those, list A, that identifies both your, or establishes both your identity and right to work. If you do not have a list A document, a, another common list B document to establish identity uh, is a driver's license or a ID card, usually issued by a state. And then list C, social security card, that establishes your citizenship and your right to work in the US. You can see here, there are a number of different documents that can be used. Again, these are the documents that the employee has the right to choose from, or the employer uh, cannot dictate which uh, documents the employee chooses to list uh, from, from this group. In list A, subpart five, you can see if you're using a foreign passport, this is another example of where you might have some more, more than one document to list in that list A section on the first page. It's important to note too that in addition to the documents listed in lists A, B, and C, you can provide a receipt. A lot of times this comes up uh, if you are have lost or replaced or renewing a document that is found in list A, B, or C. And you'll see down here acceptable receipts that can be used in lieu of a document for a temporary period. Again, that, that's often if you have lost your passport and you have submitted a request to replace one, you have a receipt for that. If, if once the new passport comes in, then you go back to um, additional information in section one and list in the information that is provided once the actual passport is received. Moving on to page three, uh, this is something new. This is, uh, in many situations, if you have uh, an employee verifying their eligibility to work, they may not be a native speaker, and this allows for the um, opportunity for a translator to assist in completing Form I-9. Again, very straightforward. At the top here, you identify the uh, employee that is completing the form, and then you have four identical sections here uh, where the translator, if used, signs, dates, uh, lists their identifying information, last name, first name, middle initial, address, uh, where, where they reside. So if a translator is used for filling out Form I-9, this is where they would complete their information uh, just to verify that the information that they're providing on behalf of the employee is accurate. Last page on new Form I-9, this is a change from the current version. Uh, this is Supplement B, uh, which replaces uh, Section 3. And this addresses if you need to re-verify or rehire uh, an employee. Again, similar to the translation section, last name, first name, middle initial of the employee who's filling out the form. Then if you have a rehire situation, you list the date of rehire here. If you're needing to re-verify due to a name change, you list the employee's new name here. And then we get down to the documents reviewed uh, at the rehire or re-verification section. This is the same information uh, required to be produced in section two on the first page. You list document title, document number, expiration date, and then the information uh, from the employer reviewing the document. Again, just kind of a, a summary of the information provided on page one 
and you have three sections here if you need to have a multiple uh, rehire or re-verification of the employee. Again, the information in this new, uh, new form I-9 is, is similar to what was in the original form I-9. This was published August 1st of this year and uh, will be the only form of I-9 that can be used starting November 1st of 2023. If you have any questions about how to complete a form I-9, again, there are links uh, here within the form that provide you assistance. If you look here on page four, there's a link here, Handbook for Employers, uh, guidance for completing the form. This is a 140 page handbook that will answer just about any question you have, but if that still doesn't provide you the information you need, one important thing to note here is that this video is for informational purposes only. This is not providing legal advice. If you have a question about a specific employee as it relates to Form I-9, I would encourage you to contact an employment attorney to have that question answered. Thank you again for watching our video. Hope this was an informative summary of Form I-9. Let us know in the comment section below if you have any questions about Form I-9 or uh, if there are any topics you'd like to see uh, the Excel Pro team cover in future videos. Our contact information can be found in the description box below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and follow Excel Pro on all social media platforms. You can keep up with any news we have uh, going on here at Excel Pro, in addition uh, to, most importantly, all of our job postings. Thanks so much for your time.